How about I just tell you guys a story? That's a hell of a lot easier. So, when I was probably 17 or 18 years old, you know, all I ever really wanted to do was, was ranch. And at that time, my folks' place and where agriculture was, you know, wasn't big enough to support more than one family. And I remember being out in the field and, you know, breaking down to my dad, like, what am I gonna do? You know, I, I want a ranch so bad. And he's like, ah. And it wasn't a defeatist kind of thing for him to say, but he just said, I, I don't think that's a real possibility, Pete. But the reason that I love what we're doing is that to really make a go at it without having a lot of acreage, we're you know, not a legacy ranching family, I think that it gives hope for others that want to get into this. I'm Megan Lannon. I'm with Barney Creek Livestock. Um, I own and operate this operation with my husband, Pete. We are based in the Paradise Valley um, out of Livingston, Montana. I'm Pete Lannon. I'm a fourth generation rancher here in Paradise Valley. We run cow calf pears, yearlings, and then grass fed finished beef, some sometimes Malloy sheep. You know, land prices in Paradise Valley are ten thousand dollars an acre plus. I mean that that would be bottom line. And there's just no way that you can bankroll that and be profitable. And so we had to come up with a different model than what would be considered traditional around here. We, we find landowners that are interested in improving their land and that care about the ecosystem and soil health and wildlife and conservation. And those are the folks that we try to foster a relationship with. We utilize our livestock and work with them to improve their land. When we partner with those landowners, we really teach them about what's going on. And we really, we've made it our motto to not just drop off the livestock and leave. We tell them about soil health, we share their soil tests, their plant tissue tests. Sometimes we do a water test but we're showing them how all these things are related and how that's coming out in, in the beef or in the lamb and how that ends up on your plate to sort of close that loop on the whole supply chain. And then they're going to go to their peers and talk about how they're sequestering carbon, how they've got livestock on the land and they're bringing back the ecosystem and they've seen all these things. So what we're hoping that brings is it opens doors for more grazers to be able to do what we're doing if they can't afford, uh, you know, a lot of land and, and a lot of livestock, so. It's not great for the dung beetles, and we really need those dung beetles and other. So we've got some just fantastic landowners as partners. In particular, Lara Burks. Uh, my name is Lara Burks. I'm fortunate enough to be a, a resident of Paradise Valley, Montana. Um, we have long-standing family ties back to the area, um, family homestead just down the valley, late 1800s. I'm a neighbor of Megan and Pete who run Barney Creek just down the road. So when Megan and Pete told me what they were doing with Barney Creek around regenerative agriculture, it's just such a nice model to be able to allow neighbors to participate um, in something that used to be quite exclusive for large landowners. Um, so we only have a small piece of land, but you know, quite a bit to graze and quite a lot to regenerate after many years of, of lying fallow. So that was really the, the, the interest, which was a personal and professional one, and to be able to be a part of a broader conservation initiative locally in Paradise Valley. The advantage of regenerative agriculture and the adaptive grazing that uh, Megan and Pete and Barney Creek have adopted is that it's really bringing back the microbiology in the soil. So when we don't have um, hooves on the soil and um, all of the components that go with that, ultimately it, it desertifies and, um, and that's largely what's happened here because it hadn't been grazed for many, many years. So what we do, I mean, in a nutshell, is we're grazers. We use cows 
to manage the land. And we do it with very low inputs. How we achieve that is mostly we're moving cows every day. And that's generally bunching up the cows fairly tight, but giving the grass a ton of rest. So that very active of managing but resting the land at the same time creates much deeper root systems, which in the long run will create um, a much better system for retaining water. Um, in addition, you know, we're, we're managing for fire, um, noxious weeds, so a lot of things that we can do uh, whilst partnering with our, with our neighbors um, instead of just uh, necessarily hanging the land or, um, or leaving it to, to just go fallow and thinking about the extraordinary privilege it is to live here and with that comes I think a responsibility to to leave this place in a, in a better place than we found it. And so this award uh, means so much to us when we got that phone call, we both started crying because it was just like, this is our favorite part is um, we watching the land come back and the birds and watching the water infiltrate and. Like watching our daughter go into classes with kindergartners to her peers, you know, now, now soft, she's gonna be a sophomore. Um, sharing this message and what we're doing and, and educating younger people um, about healthy land and healthy ecosystems and, and healthy relationships um, is huge. And the cool thing to me is, you know, my dad and mom live 600 yards away. Um, they still help out on the ranch with whatever they can help out with. There's Megan and I, and then, our, then, then there's our two kids, and, and they're helping. And so, you know, I'm fourth generation, my kids are fifth generation. That's, that's pretty special. Um, hopefully I don't ruin it for them, and, and they want to stay. Liam's really funny. We'll drive by places uh, as we're going to a race. He will also lean and be like, wow, that grass doesn't look good, or they should probably graze that a little bit, you know, less. And so, I mean, he's invested into what we're doing too. And But that's, that's a big part of our goal here is that, you know, when, so maybe it's not this ranch, maybe it's a, wherever they land or if they want to stay in agriculture, but we're developing a model for them to be able to continue on in, in agriculture. But the reason that I love what we're doing is that um, we have really found a way to to show other people what we're doing, to share with other people what we're doing, to really make a go at it without having a lot of acreage. You know, let's be real. I'm I'm almost 50 years old. I won't tell you how old Megan is, but um, you know, I'm not going to live forever. So maybe I got 20 more good years of being able to do this 30, I don't know. But the only way that this moves forward and lives on is the influence that you have on other people. You know, whether it's your kids, whether it's a young person that you've met who asks you questions and could call you up, um, whether it's your neighbor. Uh, I think that's more important than anything.